If you're improving, you're spending more time here. And you need this one shot. You'll notice that as you improve, you're gonna be spending more time at the NVZ. And your dink battles become more common and longer. Especially popular at the NVZ is the backhand cross court dink rally. So if you're feeling comfortable the longer the rally goes, you're popping the ball up or maybe hitting into the net, or even if you're one of those lefties. We're gonna show you how to become a backhand dinking machine. So what we're gonna show you are the nine things that'll make you an absolute backhand dinking ninja. So Tony, you got number one. You got it. So the first one has to do with the grip that you use when you're hitting any shots, but dink in particular, since we're focusing on the backhand dink. We like the continental grip, which is the one that I'm holding it right here, which is 90 degrees to the court. We're gonna link to a video up here that'll explain more about the continental grip. You can see it really clearly and why it's such a good grip all the way around, but it'll definitely make your backhand dink way easier. Other grips that you see are like the Western grip that looks like this. So Ooh. you can see how I open up the paddle a lot more. Backhand dink is reasonably easy to hit up like this, but it's harder to do other types of shots with the backhand with this kind of grip. And we have a video that talks about the hazards of these other types of grips and the different limitations that they can bring to your game. So our recommendation is the continental grip for your dinks as well as every other shot. So I'm gonna take the next two, which happens to be stance and then our footwork. So one of the things I see at the courts, our players stand very tall and very flat footed. When you stand, you wanna be nice and limber so you can move anywhere on the court. The other thing that happens to us is our footwork. And one of the things that I see happen quite often in footwork is we use just way too much movement. Minimize your amount of movement. <laughs> I like that, Tony. Minimize your amount of movement as you move laterally, and you're gonna get much more consistent with that backhand dink. One of the questions we get asked is, should I have my body facing the net all the time, or is it okay to do that position? What do you think, Tony? Well, the cross step is fine, and the open stance is fine. So this would be an open stance, like this, right? Or a cross step would look like this, right? Where I'm crossing one foot over in front of the other. There's nothing technically wrong with a cross step. You just have to understand that you are opening up your shoulder and your back to the court. So what can happen there is if you don't recover in time, now you're subject to attack. Whereas if you use a more open stance, then you're more ready for the next shot. But if it's natural for you to cross step and that's what you need to do to get to the shot, that's top priority always. Remember, footwork is a learned skill and it's gonna take you some time to develop good footwork. But the big thing is be ready. And the system we call it standing on your triangles so that you're ready to move for your backhand dink. All right, TJ, that's really good stuff on the footwork. We're gonna transition now from footwork to the actual hitting of the ball. And the hitting of the ball, I wanna focus on three areas that we see are common problems. One has to do with our paddle position at the time that we start our stroke. A lot of times players are doing these really big swings like this. The less that we can do there, like you said on footwork, less is more, right? So the less we can do with the paddle in terms of taking it out to the ball, the better our stroke is going to be. Then the second thing is what drives the shot. What drives the shot when a nice dink is your shoulder primarily. So you want to use your shoulder as opposed to doing a lot of, you know, wristy kind of shots, elbow kind of shots, you know, try and get that out of the mix, use more shoulder. And then the last thing I would say, CJ, is has to do with the amount of swing. Uh, I alluded to that earlier with the paddle position, but it's a different way of thinking about it, which is, you know, are, are you taking a really big, really big swing every time, right? That's going to be problematic as it was there. Instead, try and consider making the swing more compact. The more compact your swing, just like in anything else in pickleball, less is more, the better your shot will be. So if you want a drill that'll help you to practice all of the tips that we just gave you, make sure you stick around to the very end of this video. So Tony, one of the other things that we see, mistakes we see players make on the backhand dink is they get so close to the line. They do. <laughs> that, <laughs> that they end up missing it frequently, right? And so right. the key there is instead of trying to hit right on the line every time, Give yourself some margin, a couple of inches, three, four, five inches in, depending on your level of proficiency, to avoid that unnecessary mistake. 
hitting the ball wide. Much better target there, CJ. Well, the other thing, we're on a, here on a windy day, so you don't know <laughs> what the wind may do to that dink if you get too close to the line. You may have noticed throughout this video that CJ has been hitting most of her dinks with two hands, and I've been hitting most of my dinks with one hand. You can use either technique, one hand or two hands. Let me explain to you the advantage and disadvantage of two hands. Biggest advantage of two hands is greater stability. Once you put the second hand on there, you can have greater stability with your dinks, right? The, the paddle won't flutter as much by using two hands. Disadvantage of two-handed dink is the amount of reach you have. So because you have the other hand on there, you're more constrained. So if you get pushed wide like that, oops, then potentially you won't be able to reach it because of the second hand. So one last skill that you need to be a backhand dinking ninja is a get out of jail free card, or what we call a safe dink. This dink is, is, the idea of this dink is to get you out of trouble, right? When you're stressed, and this, we're focusing on the backhand dink. So a lot of times players are trying to stress you on that backhand side. So if you're able to reset from there, what we call a three-year-old dink in our trainings, you're able to get out of really tough situations as CJ is gonna demonstrate in a second. Excellent, CJ. See how she was able to reset that shot? Live to, hit, live to battle another shot. That's the key with that safe dink. Now we're gonna show you a drill that makes you a backhand dinking ninja. It's gonna force you to incorporate these nine tips that we just gave you into your backhand dinks. All right, it's bonus time. You know how we love our bonuses here at Better Pickleball. Here's a game for you to practice everything you just learned. What are the rules of this game, Tony? See how many times we can dink it. We gotta keep it bouncing inside the line, that's for sure. And um, we gotta stress our opponents as much uh, as we can. Oh, good. a little Make stress? It hard. A little stress? A little stress. All right, here we go. And we're trying to take as many of these on the backhand as we possibly right. can. So here we go. I don't know if that was that in. That was close, that was close, that was close. <laughs> what did we get, about five? Let's do it again. One, two, three. Woo, I can't count that high. All I right, so CJ is doing the cooperative one. We're gonna do this one into this cooperative then, right? Because we're trying to count max. All right, so we've been cooperative. We can do a few of these. How about if we stress? Like that. <laughs> now, if you happen to have a lefty-righty combination like we have here, you can really work on the backhand. Pinch the middle just a little bit. This opens up this side of the court, and it's going to allow us to get more backhands in here. And All we'll right. make it so you can't hit any forehands, no matter what. That makes you move around. If I get you there, I'm going to move you back over there. You got to hit a backhand. That's, oh, fault. <laughs> so we're going to do. Do it again. Oh, I have to hit a backhand. Hit a backhand. If you hit a forehand, it's, that makes you move, right? So I'll move you there, and then I'll move you back over here. We, ah, got to hit a backhand. Oh, I see what you're saying now. <laughs> okay, all right. All right I got going. it. So I'll move you over there. You got to hit a backhand. There you go. Yep, you want to do that to me, <laughs> now I can push you over there, right? You got a good workout, too. I put you back over here. Oh, get around it. Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> it's a really good that drill, though. <laughs> yeah, it makes you work on those backhands, right? Forces you to get backhands, and you get a lot of cardio on this Well, as well. the other thing, too, is it's making you work on that lateral yeah. footwork, right? And that lateral movement. And it's it was it's a little unnatural yeah. to not, just not spin the pedal to That's the other right. side. It's going to make your feet work a little bit faster. I'm not sure which one of those tips it will help your game more, but I know if you just take even one of these and begin to apply it, your backhand dink is going to get better. 100%. The backhand dink is such an attackable spot on the court. If you improve that shot, you make it less likely that your opponents can exploit that weakness in your game. Now, if you want more strategies for your new home away from home, the non-volley zone, make sure you click on this link right above because together we can train smart, live bold, and age well.